Hey friends, so now we are going to find out the Fourier series for f of x which is equal to negative pi when the value of x is between minus pi to 0 and f of x is equal to x if x is between 0 to pi. Now, also we have to state the value of f of x at x equal to 0. So, let's solve this question afterwards. First of all, let's find out the Fourier series for a given range. So, guys, here you can see that the given range is from negative pi to pi. So, you have to see the endpoints. And this range negative pi to pi is divided into two parts that is negative pi to 0 first range and the second is 0 to pi. So, let's start. So, in short, I can say that this is the Fourier expansion of f of x in minus pi to pi. So, we have seen the formula for this in the previous video so you can go back to the video that is what is Fourier series there I've explained what is the Fourier expansion in negative pi to pi so I'll write down that formula directly so here I'll say So guys, we'll call this series as equation number 1 and then we will find out the value of a0, a and bn and we'll put it in equation number 1 to get the Fourier series for given function f of x. So let's start. So here, well, how to get a0? So the formula to get a0 is 1 upon 2 pi integration 0 to uh, now this time I will not take 0 to 2 pi because range is from negative pi to pi. So I will change this. I will make it as negative pi to pi and f of x dx. So guys, I will use this formula. So here 1 upon 2 pi as it is and this range negative pi to pi is divided into two parts. So first part or first range is negative pi to 0 in this the value of f of x is minus pi so this will become minus pi dx plus next is 0 to pi so next range is 0 to pi or next limit is 0 to pi and that time the value of f of x is x so i'll say x dx now let's evaluate this integration so negative pi will come outside so this will become a naught equal to 1 upon 2 pi negative pi outside and here we will get 1 so integration of 1 is x so we will get x from minus pi to 0 plus the integration of second term is x square upon 2 from 0 to pi. So here I will say it is x square by 2 from 0 to pi. Now let's put upper and lower limits. So we will get 1 upon 2 pi negative pi as it is. Upper limit 0, middle sign minus. If I put minus pi, that will become plus pi. Plus, here upper limit is pi, so that will become pi square by 2. Minus, lower limit is 0, so we will get 0. So, this is the value. Let's simplify this. So, this is 1 upon 2 pi. Here, minus pi into pi, that is minus pi square plus pi square by 2. So, guys, therefore, a0 is 1 upon 2 pi. Now if I simplify this, I will do cross multiplication. That will become minus 2 pi square plus pi square. That is minus pi square by 2. So pi and pi will be cancelled. And we will get minus pi by 4. So this is the value of A0. Now let's find out the value of An. So therefore I will say An equal to. So for An. 
will use the formula that is 1 by pi integration minus pi to pi f of x cos of nx dx now using this formula i'm going to find out a n so it is 1 by pi now this range is divided into two parts in the question the first part is minus pi to 0 and the second range is 0 to pi so here i'll say integration negative pi to 0 and then plus 0 to pi so this becomes minus pi to pi so for the first range the value of f of x is given as negative pi and for second range it is x so i'll put those values so this will become negative pi cos of nx dx and this is x cos of nx dx so now let's solve this integration so minus pi will come outside so here we will get it is equal to so a n equal to 1 by pi negative pi outside now the integration of cos nx is sin nx upon n so we will get here sin of nx upon n from negative pi to 0 plus let's evaluate this integration now the question is how to evaluate this integration because here we have two terms which are multiplying each other so this is integration by parts so to solve or to evaluate this integration we are going to use one shortcut formula what is that so it is like this so integration u into v dx is u v1 minus u dash v2 plus u double dash v3 minus so on so guys what do we do we write down u and v where we find out derivative of u in each and every term so u is this term u dash is the first derivative of u u double dash is the derivative of u dash the next term will be u triple dash and so on similarly v1 v2 v3 are nothing but the integration of v so v1 is the first integral v2 is the second time integration or v2 is the integration of v1 then v3 is the integration of v2 and so on so guys to use this formula remember one thing that this u must be algebraic function because if it is algebraic then only after finding the derivatives it will become zero at some term if you are taking u as exponential function or if you are taking u as trigonometric function then guys remember you will never get zero so you have to do it infinite time so it might be today night tomorrow morning day after tomorrow morning and so on you'll be doing it so don't waste your time instead of that just observe the given term so here there are two terms i'll make this x as u and this cos nx as v because i know the derivative of x is gonna be zero after two steps so let's start with this so first term is u so first term is x so i'll write x as it is here in the bracket so x second term is v1 so integration of cos nx so i'll put bracket there it is sine of nx upon n bracket close middle sign minus next term u dash so derivative of u that is derivative of x is 1 so i'll write here 1 next v2 that is integration of v1 so guys this is v1 now integration of sin nx is negative cos nx upon n but guys here we also have n because this whole term is v1 so this n will join this n and that will become n square so this is what the value of integration now i will not continue because if i continue to the next step the next step is u double dash now u double dash is a derivative of u dash and guys here u dash is 1 so the derivative of 1 is going to be 0 so i'll stop here because next term is going to be 0 and the integration or the limit is from 0 to pi now let's start so let's put upper and lower limit so here we will get 1 by pi negative pi as it is now here we'll put upper limit which is 0 minus lower limit which is pi 
So sine of alpha is also zero. So guys, here we are going to get zero. Plus, now in this formula, I'll put upper limit as pi. So here we will get first term as pi into sine n pi. But guys, sine n pi is zero. So we'll get upper zero by substituting the upper limit. Next, minus minus plus cos of n pi. And cos of n pi is negative one raised to n upon n square. So bracket close because we have substituted upper limit. Middle sign negative. Now let's put the lower limit which is zero. So sine zero is zero. So guys always remember whenever you want to substitute upper and lower limit, always try to put that in trigonometric term because we have seen some important results in the previous videos where we know value of sine n pi, sine 2 n pi, cos n pi, cos 2 n pi and so on. So when you put this value directly in a trigonometric function, we can evaluate this and we can get answer easily. Next, so this is 0. Next, minus minus plus. If I put 0 here, cos of 0 is 1 upon n square. So now, let's find out the values. So here, 1 by pi as it is. This term is 0. Here, we will get negative 1 raised to n upon n square. And this is minus plus minus 1 upon n square. So we can take denominator common and therefore we will go we will get value of a n. So I'll write down that in different color value of a n equal to 1 upon pi n square. So I can take n square common and in the bracket we will get negative 1 raised to n minus 1. So guys here we got the value of a n. Now let's find out the bn which is last value. So bn equal to 1 by pi integration negative pi to pi f of x sine of nx dx. So let's start. What is the value of f of x? But before that, let's see the range. So minus pi to pi. So this range is divided into two parts. So the first part is minus pi to 0. Second one is 0 to pi. So let's divide it. So that will become 1 by pi integration minus pi to 0 and the second range is integration 0 to pi. So in the first range minus pi to 0 we have f of x as negative pi and in the second range it is x. So here I'll say it is minus pi sine of nx dx and here x sine of nx dx. Now let's evaluate these two integrations. So I'll take this negative pi outside and the integration of sine nx is minus cos nx upon n. So we will get bn equal to minus pi outside. And the range is from negative pi to 0 plus. So this is the second term. Now in second term there are two functions x and sine nx which are multiplying each other. So here I am going to use the rule of u into v. So I will make this x as u and sine nx as v because when we will use that shortcut formula which I taught you sometime before this one then we should get 0 at some step so the derivative of x becomes 0 after 2 step so here i'll start with this so x is u so my first term will be x then v1 so v1 is integration of sine nx which is negative cos of nx upon n middle sign minus then u dash that is derivative of u so derivative of x is equal to 1 then v2 that is integration of v1 so integration of negative cos is negative sin as it is and the integration of cos is sin nx upon n so guys this will become n square because already we have one more n here so i'll close this bracket and here this limit is from 0 to pi. 
Next, let's put the upper and lower limit in the integration. So here we will get 1 by pi, negative pi as it is. Now here I can take n outside because it is constant and in the bracket I'll put the values. So when I put 0, we'll get cos 0 which is 1 but sign is there so minus 1 will be the answer for upper limit. Middle set negative. Now let's put lower limit. Lower limit is negative pi. So cos of minus n pi. So guys here I'll show you the cos of minus n pi is cos of n pi. And cos of n pi is negative 1 raised to n. So guys when I put this minus pi here we are gonna get minus 1 raised to n. But with this we have negative sign also. So this sign will become positive. Next plus if I put upper limit as pi we will get this pi here I'll put in the bracket pi negative sign also it is multiplying so minus pi the value of cos n pi is minus 1 raised to n upon n next if we put pi here we will get sin n pi which is 0 so we'll get only one value minus now let's put 0 so 0 into anything 0 and sine of 0 is also 0 so we'll get second term as 0 now whatever term that we got let's simplify it so here we will get 1 upon pi here i can take n common outside because it is present in two terms now in the bracket from here we will get minus pi and in bracket this is positive term that is minus 1 raised to n and this is minus 1 here plus minus again minus pi minus 1 raised to n now from these two terms again i can take pi outside and this pi will be cancelled with this pi so we will get 1 upon n outside now here we will get minus of minus 1 raised to n minus 1 and minus of minus 1 raised to n so guys let's simplify these terms so due to this nine minus sign we will get minus of minus 1 raised to n then minus minus is plus 1 and this is again minus of minus 1 raised to n so this will become minus 2 times minus 1 raised to n so we can say that bn is 1 by n this one is positive and addition of these two terms is minus 2 times minus 1 raised to n and guys here we got the value of bn so we got a naught a and bn now let's put all these three values in equation number one to get the Fourier series so here i'll say from equation number one by substituting values of a naught a n and bn f of x is equal to first values a naught now what is a naught So value of a naught we got as negative pi by 4. So let's put that value. So here I'll say it is negative pi by 4. Next plus summation a n cos n x. What is a n? So this is the value of a n. Now guys in a n 1 upon pi is a constant. So I can, I'll take that outside the summation. So we will get plus 1 by pi summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n so a n remaining a n is minus 1 raised to n minus 1 upon here i'll give the bracket upon n square so this is the value of a n after taking 1 upon pi outside into cos of n x plus now summation b n sin n x what is b n so this is the value of bn so i'll write down this value in summation 
so that is summation n equals to 1 to infinity 1 minus 2 times minus 1 raised to n whole upon n into sin nx so guys by substituting the value of a naught a n and b n we got the Fourier series so you can keep this as an answer or you may expand it so let's say if i want to expand it what will get so one term is minus pi by 4 as it is plus 1 by pi now let's see what we get inside the bracket so let's start putting one one value of n so first value of n is 1 so this will become minus 1 raised to 1 so that is minus 1 so minus 1 and minus 1 that is minus 2 here 1 square into cos of n is 1 so 1x next the second value of n is 2 so minus 1 raised to 2 is positive 1 so positive 1 and negative 1 is 0 so for n equal to 2 answer is 0 next n is 3 so minus 1 raised to 3 that is minus 1 so minus 1 and minus 1 again guys it is minus 2 n is 3 so denominator is 3 square and cos of 3x again when i put n equal to 4 minus 1 raised to 4 positive 1 and positive 1 minus 1 0 so again the term is 0 it means guys whenever n is even we are getting answer as 0 so it means we will get all odd terms in this series so next term will be minus 2 upon 5 square cos of 5x minus so on next here plus let's put the value so let's start with 1 so when n is 1 this will become minus 1 raised to 1 so minus 1 and minus 1 into 2 that is minus 2 and minus 2 and this minus so again it will become plus 2 so 1 plus 2 is 3 upon 1 into sin x now let's put n as 2 so minus 1 raised to 2 is positive 1 so 1 minus 2 is negative 1 so i'll say minus 1 by 2 into sin of 2x next n is 3 so minus 1 raised to 3 is minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 plus 2 so 1 plus 2 is 3 so again plus 3 upon n is 3 so 3 into sin 3x then minus and so on so guys this is what the Fourier series for the given f of x now let's find out the next value so here we have to also find out the value of f of x at x equal to 0 now how to get so to find the value of f of x where to substitute that value of x equal to 0 because there are two range so in the first range it is from minus pi to 0 and the second range is from 0 to pi so where should i put this x equal to 0 because see whenever there are multiple values of f of x and if you want to find out the value of f of x at certain point then what do we see is where that point lies and accordingly we select the f of x so let's say if f of x we, we let's say if we want to find out f of x at x equal to 1 then i'll say that 1 lies in 0 to pi so therefore the value of f of x is x so likewise now here we want to find out value f of x at x equal to 0 and let me tell you my friend that x equal to 0 does not lie in any of the range because this range says that because this range says that x is less than 0 so, but x is not 0 and this range says that x is greater than 0 but x is not 0 it means 0 is not included in any of the range so guys what is this scenario so let me tell you that this type of situation is called as discontinuity and the point that is x equal to 0 is called as point of discontinuity so here i'll say that the function f of x is discontinuous at x equal to 0 and x equal to 0 is a point of discontinuity so let's start here so here i'll say so now 
f of x is discontinuous at x equal to 0 because at x equal to 0 the value of function is not defined so how to find the value of function at point of discontinuity so for that we have one formula so i'll tell you that formula so here is the thing so we have already covered this formula in the previous video uh, where i sh i've shown you that whenever there is a point of discontinuity how to get the answer so here i'm gonna use that formula directly so here, I, here i'll say at point of discontinuity x equal to 0 the value of function f of x or i would say f of 0 is given by 1 by 2 limit x tends to left hand side limit or x tends to 0 from left hand side f of x plus limit x tends to 0 from right hand side f of x so guys this is what the formula is now let's start so x tends to 0 from left hand side so here if you see this range then in the first range in the first range you can see that this is a side where we have the left hand side of 0 or we are approaching or this is a side which i can say that negative side of 0 and 0 to pi is the positive side of 0 so if i want to approach 0 from negative side then obviously that time x will take these values so for first limit i'll use my f of x as minus pi so here i'll say it is equal to half limit x tends to 0 from left hand side and here the value of function is minus pi plus limit x tends to 0 from right hand side now if i consider the right hand side of 0 then obviously x will take the values which are given in this range so that therefore i'll consider the value of f of x as x for this limit so here it is x now let's put the value of x as 0 here so we will get half now here we don't have any x so negative pi will remain as it is plus now x is 0 so we'll put this 0 directly here so we'll get 0 and therefore the answer is negative pi by 2 so guys this is the value of f of x at x equal to 0 that is the point of discontinuity so guys, i'm sure that you understood how i got the Fourier series and how to find the value of function at point of discontinuity so if you want to learn more videos on engineering mathematics and Fourier series so guys you have to visit ikeda.com because there only you can find me and all my videos thank you very much